What's up everyone? This is Therese Salim, aka Teaser, representing again from A Live Story. Now, during my dance career, I have met a lot of people from all over the world with different dance styles. And in this interview series, we are interviewing some of the most amazing dancers, choreographers, entrepreneurs with a dancing background. So if you haven't seen the previous episodes, don't forget to check out A Live Story's Facebook page and there you will find all the interviews. Today, I'm gonna interview an amazing person. He's not only my friend, but he's also the world champion of Kizomba. We're gonna talk with Shamalo from Castle of Dance. I need a glass of water. Boy, your boy is good to know ya. Is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. It's your primitive and when yet. It's your primitive and when yet. If you get a big, let me search it. Your nails done, get a pedicure, get your hair did. Boy, lift it up, let's make a toaster. Oh. Let's get drunk, this gonna bring us closer. Don't I look like a Holly Berry poster? Oh. See the Belvedere playing tricks on ya. Oh. Girlfriend wanna be like me, never. Oh. You won't find a trick that's even better. Oh. I make it hot as Las Vegas weather. Oh. Listen up close while I take it backwards. Oh, I have against the gal, listen me and with your I'm not a prostitute, but I can give you what you want. I love your braids and your mouth full of phones. So if you don't know who Shamala is, he is one of the world champions in Kizomba, one of the most booked artists, top 10 in the world. But he didn't start off with Kizomba. Shamala grew up with three brothers and one sister, and his parents have Congolese roots. And at age of nine, he got introduced to hip hop. Shamalo got mentored by the UDAT crew and later became a part of the CPEF crew, which is also still a part of today. In 2013, Shamalo officially took his first Kizomba class. As a Kizomba dancer, Shamalo is known worldwide for his wide musicality and his technical skills. Later on, he started his dance school here in Amsterdam in the Netherlands called Castle of Dance. So before we go into this interview, you already know what to do. Press that like button Button, share, comment, and don't forget to click the subscribe button for all the upcoming episodes. Now, let's get into it. Welcome to this interview, Shamalo! <laughs> so, Bang Bang, how are you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm good, I'm good. Well, we are in this lockdown together, but you are working hard. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're working with right now? Uh, I'm working uh, a lot on my on new online course. Uh, so it's an amazing experience. And actually we are making this like going crazy with animation. So special character going in interaction with us and giving uh, the pleasure to still teach for people in a new platform. Yeah, so basically people can now go in and buy an online course. Uh, it's, it's musicality. What more is it that they can get out of the course? Basically, they will get um, uh, multiple tools from the Kizomba Fusion. So now we start with the first package, which is the musical, musical isolation body movement. Uh, from this, they're going to be able to, to have a lot of uh, tools to just progress as a dancer and go back on the dance floor even stronger so we have like a kind of uh, uh process like netflix but net keys so <laughs> number one, uh not that expensive actually 15 euro and 95 cents per month and from this you will get access to the videos and uh, get to know the new techniques oh that's awesome and i think that for the people who don't know you you are very innovative in a lot of stuff and that's why i really feel honored that we're doing this interview because um people know you as one of the most top booked kisomba artists in the world at the moment but maybe don't know how you got to this point and yeah. so that is the funny part because i know a little bit but i don't know everything about you so why don't we take it back from the start like where did you grow up? How was it for you growing up? Okay, I grew up on the suburb in uh, Paris. Uh, so in a small ghetto uh, where I 
actually uh, discover the love for the dance. So, you know, back in the day, uh, if you wanted to dance or learn hip hop, you needed to buy this uh, cassette, the Reebok cassette. And uh, it was my big brother, but you know, uh, when you come from the ghetto, you cannot afford uh, all those education and it's hard for them to bring also a uh, hip hop teacher or dance teacher, classic, whatever style you want to do. Uh, so I come from Paris and uh, yeah, from this, my love for the dance grew up. I, uh, to go through the Kizomba, it was like kind of tricky because, you know, you have this multicultural stuff. So you have like Cap Verdean people, uh, Caribbean people, African people, people coming from, uh, from the Maghreb uh, and French people. So we are all living together, but we also share all the, the, uh, the different culture together. And what happened is that actually when I was like around nine, 11, in between those age, I discovered the Zouk, the Cabo Zouk, which is really connected to Kizomba. And we were like, you know, trying to imitate the, the, the grand person. Because when you see the, 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 the adults dancing, you see them dancing this way. And, you know, as a child, it's like, oh, I want to, oh, okay, let's do like that. And if you uh, get caught, they, they're going to just <laughs> beat you because it's not supposed to be for the, for the little ones. And, uh, yeah, so basically 2013, uh, I get my first lesson, but you know, I come from hip hop. So the way my point of view was from the, the Kizomba people is was for me, they were not dancing, they were walking. So I couldn't connect my stuff to it, but I was still listening the music and dancing Passad, which is come from, coming from Cap Vert. And uh, this is their way also to dance on Kizomba. And uh, 2014, I got my first uh, first love for the lesson, and I never stopped. I never stopped. So 2015, my first uh, Kizomba festival when I meet you, <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't no able to speak one word in English. So it was so funny. I was just communicating with people with movement, gesture. Uh, in uh, 2015, I met my ex-girlfriend, which bring me into Amsterdam. But before this, I was like, no, uh, I have the hip hop mentality. If I want to be someone to do something uh, in Kizomba and share my knowledge, because I was also giving exercises and coaching people in hip hop, I said, no. I should do something, but something big. So I decided to do the World Championship of Hip Hop, and uh, we mark history. We are the we were the first couple who won the city, the country, and the World Championship. So that was the Africa dancer, right? Africa yeah. dancer. So, like, just just to go back to let's let's go back to that a little bit later, because I think that what you touched on now was a part of a competition mentality that you got from dancing hip hop. Can we zoom in a little bit, like the young Shamalo, uh, growing up with a lot of cultures around him, uh, getting introduced to hip hop? Was it by your brother? Uh, it was by my brother first, but also you know. Uh, we were allowed to go outside to go to the park as a little one to play, but they have like this small building when you see people training and it was just for the, 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 the teenager and the adults. So you as a little one, you, you weren't allowed. So what you're going to do, you're going to stare at the window and when they see you, you just run away, but you, you love it but they didn't understand it and and they didn't give you this opportunity to also enter the room and maybe shake your body because they might not know that you also love dancing mm. and so what what was your stepping point from being outside the window to actually become a part of it what happened there uh i was getting the right age to be able to enter so <laughs> had to wait <laughs> i was waiting for this so when I got the chance finally to enter the room, I was like, 
okay, yes, this is what I want to do. But I was also a handball player. So uh, I was a goalkeeper and making the, the, the selection to do um, the, to be into the wishes team from France. But, you know, it's like, it was a moment that I was like giving up on this because I didn't get the support of my parents on it. I didn't get the support of my coaches uh, related to any reason. So I said, you know what? I don't feel it anymore. I just was gonna quit. People was like uh, shocked about it, and I just say, yeah, I'm just gonna go to hip hop because this is what I feel right now. And like everyone, almost have this the first embarrassing moment of battling. Like somebody gonna beat your ass, and you kind of already know it before you step in, but you still have the courage because you also know that if I want to become good at battling, I need to start. Do you remember your first battle? Me, uh, my first, but I was lucky. I was the one who won. But it was, it wasn't like you know. The, I was in an elementary school. I wasn't allowed to still enter the hip hop room. But I was looking videos, looking this Reebok cassette, and I was taking my information and putting this uh, on the dance floor. But uh, to be honest, I didn't like the, the underground battle scene because I was shy. And I just wanted to express myself. So I didn't want it to fight to express myself. So uh, I got into a crew, a hip hop crew, CPK, CPF crew. I'm still in it, by the way. But uh, they were, the, when you are in a crew, you need to represent. So you are forced to go into the underground scene and to fight. But it wasn't what I wanted. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna step up because otherwise, if I'm not there, I'm not in the crew. If I'm not in the crew, I get a dead. So let's make a step. And yes, I, I lose uh, again that son uh, from Wanted Posse. And it was like really a nice battle because it's uh, the concept was like, uh, you go with your teacher, the student and the teacher against another student and his teacher. Mm. And it was killer son. Uh, Killerson with Denson against me and Tierno from Udat. And it was an interesting one. And it's just because I knew that I wasn't this extravert guy that I was losing. But at this moment, in a technical way, I was up there, but I was putting myself over here. Mm -hmm. And when you go back home, you have like this, this sad feeling, but you're like, no. I'm not going to get this anymore. So you're going to go back to the training room and train harder. What's the biggest thing you took away from the battle scene into what you're doing now? Um, it was kind of a therapy for me. Um, it was a way to understand who I was, becoming stronger and making my points on the dance floor. So because I was in the shoe of this shy guy, I discovered the process of empowering yourself. And it's what I just take from hip hop and it's what I give to my student in Kizomba, but in a different way for them to, to still be able to digest the information and make the step to get where it needs to go. You were in all these battles, you continue with your hip hop and at some point, that uh, experience from you being like interested in Zook as a small, smaller boy or whatever, did, was that the, the thing that made you go into Kizomba or what, how did you actually start there? I love music. So at the moment that I was listening hip hop in my playlist, uh, they had also Kizomba and Zook, like also dancehall and all the stuff. But the thing is like, I was like, a clubber, someone who go all the time to Caribbean party, hip hop, mix and everything. So all the time that we go over there, so at the moment that you go over there as a dancer, people know you. So we, we, we had our connection into the nightclub. And before the, that our party stopped, they were giving the key zumba lesson. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to go dance this. It was Tony Pirata was giving the lesson. I was like, yeah, you can dance. But the rest, no. Still with the vision of a hip hop dancer because we, we, we have 
like a deep meaning of what is dancing. And, and some Kizomba people don't understand this meaning. So the, 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 the switch is that I was always already dancing facade, which is for me was the best Kizomba way to dance uh, next to what they were doing. But at the moment that I understood that I could translate everything that I have from my hip hop, from my dance, or from, from my facade into the, the Kizomba, I said like, but why I didn't step in before? So I open up myself and I make the switch. So I said, bye bye hip hop and welcome to Kizomba. For the people who don't dance Kizomba and maybe miss listening to this interview, you actually joined a taxi team. Can you explain a little bit for people who don't know what a taxi team is? What is that for a kind of a construct in Kizomba? Okay, uh, the, taxi, the taxi dancer actually is a concept uh, uh, to uh, make sure that the balance men and women go in a good way because you know uh, in a couple dance you're going to find a lot more women than men uh, over there so what they wanted to do is to bring um, some people who can give trans trans translate the, the, the joy of the dance exchange with people that the ladies who paid maybe 10, 50, 20, 25 euro can go also out happy. Because let's say you go to a party to dance, you pay your 20, 25 euro, but you cannot dance at the end. So actually you did pay just to show up and it wasn't good. So they wanted to fix this problem. And that's why the taxi team uh, came up. But back in the day, uh, they were taking only experienced dancer. So what you were like recruit as a taxi dancer, it was like, wow, people acknowledge me. Thank you. Thank you. And you also give even more into the dance floor. A lot of people think that like being a taxi dancer is super fancy. Like, oh, they pay for everything. You just show up, you dance with beautiful women and that's it. But you know, we who are in the scene also know that it's really hard work. Can you explain a little bit what it means, what it meant for you and what the work really is? Okay, yeah, it was really hard work because you need to be present at the social back in the day at all the parties. But next to that, you know, like the first festival when I met you in Sweden, you are a stranger. So everyone wants to dance with you. So you have no time to rest. And sometimes people don't understand because they are like, hey, listen, I pay my 100 euro to be here for the weekend. That doesn't matter with who you danced before, I want to dance with you. And if you give them this special experience, they're gonna even ask for more. So you could dance hours just by being tired and even to go to the toilet or to take a, a, a zip of your drink was a mission. So, you know, sometimes you had like some, some technique you dance and the next partner more, you switch partner more, you go next to the toilet and I'm like, yeah, you, you, just <laughs> you just figure out technique to just take some rest for yourself. But it's really hard work. Yeah, it is really hard work. And you became a part of Dream Kiss was the first taxi team, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't my first taxi team, but Dream Kiss, I did create this taxi team. So basically, my first taxi team when I was recruited was uh, Pai Shao, which is uh, well, it was um, a big party in uh, Paris. So you know. Uh, like now all the all the taxi all the teacher that you see right now they were part of taxi team of the big parties in in Paris so my generation of taxi was like Jordan Joy Guani uh P uh, uh just a little bit before uh, us and now uh they were they were me uh a lot of even Valerie and Steffi uh, Valera was also a taxi dancer. So you have all those people uh, who now are the Kizomba famous people that they were, they were going to this, um, I, how I can say this, to this uh, status of taxi dancer before to be a teacher. Because back in the day, a 
a taxi dancer could be as strong as a teacher, but being a dancer and being a teacher are two different items. Then you transitioned from being in a taxi team. You learned English <laughs> a little bit yeah, better. Yeah. My English is too <laughs> soft, so, huh? but, uh, but I can manage. <laughs> yeah, and then you became actually a teacher. How was the transition from going from, okay, now people start to know you at the parties and all over the festival, and then suddenly you're going to start teach? Do you remember your first class or how it was to finally be the teacher? Yeah, but actually, you know, um, what people didn't know, I was teacher before to be Kizomba dancer or Kizomba taxi dancer. So I wasn't uh, uh, scared or afraid, but I, my only issue was my language. I could not speak English. So... I was like, nah, it's gonna be hard. So uh, already when I was a taxi dancer, we had our head, uh, the president was all, also teaching all the time and we were assisting him. So I got already my first experience on this, but you know, I was always confident, but you don't get the same feeling when you're alone. So my first, I will not say my first lesson, but my first time that I teach, in the Netherlands was a scary one because I came over here. So people knew that I was the French champion. I, did, uh, I didn't want uh, yet uh, uh, in Portugal, but I was already getting my French title. So I arrived, I opened my, my tryout. And back in the day, you just needed to show up, but I wasn't ready for this. So I get 80 people straight. So I was like, okay, but not only this, 80 people straight, but you have like 55 ladies and 25 men. And you're in a situation you oh. need to be with you right now. Otherwise, it's going to be a total mess. And I was feeling the pressure over here, sweating on myself. I was like, okay, what should I do? What should I do? And you get creative. And I'm a thinker. So... When I know that something didn't went good, tomorrow you're gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that it's gonna be way better. That you forget what happened yesterday. So it was hard for me. It was a really bad one. I was down, but I put my head up and I said, you know what? It's just the first step. Stand up and move forward. Yeah, and you continue to teach in the Netherlands and started to get booking all over the world now like what made you what made you feel like oh on top of that i will also open my own dance school like what you know when did the switch go for because you could have continued to just travel do your workshops and be fine yeah true why did you start your company castle of dance it was a plan actually uh i planned everything but Thanks God, because everything happened in the same time. So I won Paris. People were starting to, to look at me like, okay, this guy has something. When I won France, one week later, we got booked for six months straight. But in the meantime, I, was already, I already did my, uh, my paper for the company for the dance school. So... I just I was waiting for this title to come and to say, listen, I have knowledge, I have information, this is my ticket, so my title, for you to show you what is going on. People sometimes need to see something big to be able to follow you. So if they don't know you, you can say whatever you want, they're going to be like, yeah, 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 okay. But it's not the same impact if you are coming like, okay, I'm going to give my lesson. I'm the world champion. So the impact was huge and it was a good marketing move. So it made my, it made my castle of dance becoming huge straight from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Because let's just talk about that video. When you won, um, when you started to enter the competition and you put it up the video uh, of you and your previous partner doing a robot kizomba yeah you know like i don't know how many views did that video get because it was all over 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back in the day, to get a million was like a crazy mission. And we got three million straight. We got three million straight. I wasn't ready because the thing is, uh, they upload the video, I was still in the party. So I went home and I see like, it's almost like in between 20K and 30K. Okay, yeah. That, that's cool. I never get it. So I'm, my, for me, I was like, it was one shot. So after this, it will not grow. The next day, I wake up, my ex partner called me, yeah, 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 the video is at 200K. What? We were like, okay, oh, we, the night, oh, we are at four. The next morning, over 500. We was like, okay, what happened? What happened? Five days or a week after, million. Oh. So we were like, okay, what is happening? And my Facebook went from nothing to everything. <laughs> you come over here. Hi, I'm coming from uh, Dubai. Uh, hi, I'm coming from this. I was like, okay. And I wasn't ready for this. I was like, what should I say to those people? They asked me for prices. They asked me for this. I, looked, I did a lot of mistakes, but I did learn about it. But I was like, what should I do? People ask me money for my I don't know even the value of my shows so it was crazy yeah and I also think that people don't understand like if you are an, uh, a singing artist you usually have a manager but when you are a kizomba artist yeah, you no are your own manager you are the one who have to communicate doing the marketing doing everything on your own um, yeah. you really went from being a dancer and a teacher to become like a project manager, CEO type of thing, uh, in a very short time. You kind of had to, right? Yeah, yeah. How did you niche yourself? Because there's a lot of Kisomba dancers out there, a lot of artists. What was your focus? What did you want people to take away from your classes specifically? Yeah, uh, but at the beginning, you know, because you don't know everything, you try to step uh, on the same direction as the others. But you, you also realize that it doesn't suit you and it's not connected to your personality or to what you believe uh, is good. So you, what I did is that uh, I just translate everything that I was doing in coaching with hip hop into Kizomba. And I was already creating exercises. So I just figure out the right way to make it happen in Kizomba that it can make sense and that people can grow with it. So I was really focused on technique, on energy, and uh, self-development. Because if everything is good over here, the rest kind of fall. And uh, it was hard at the beginning because you know people come into your lesson, they're like, yeah, I want your move when you do this like that. I want your move when you do this like that. But they don't understand the process. A move, to master a move, it takes time. You, You can get the idea but they have a, a long process behind this move. And Kizomba people until today still don't get it. And I was like, yeah, but for me, what I feel is that I can give you all the move, but at the end, your dance is gonna be crap because you, you don't get anything good for your dance in order for you to progress. So I was like, no, 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 no. I need to find the right system. And I'm someone, when they have a problem, I'm thinking solution. So I did try to work hard on it, and I found a really nice process, and still until today, I'm still working on it, for people to get my vision, my dance style, which is really different than, 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 than the others, but next to that, to develop their own way of going on into Kizomba. And you're also one of the few dance teachers that are bringing props into like the teaching. There is bottles and there is like cones <laughs> from the, the handball and you, it's just so many things going on. And do you actually teach from like a coach perspective, almost from a sports perspective? Or like, how do you think when you're teaching? I combine, I combine it because uh, for me, everything is connected. Uh, I was doing street workout uh, back in the day also. Um, and all those things, all the methods, if you, if you pay attention, all the methods, doesn't matter uh, 
where you come from or what kind of art you are practicing, you're going to see some logical connection in a way. And when you understand this and you're able to translate this to what you're doing, it makes this just so powerful. So, of course, I coach people for them to be able to, to find someone to look up to and to be able to be like, okay, if I fail, it's going to be behind me and going to just lift me up and it's going to help me to still move forward. Because, you know, it feels good when you have someone who's like, who knows, uh, who can help you to reach the best of yourself. And uh, that, that, that was the thing. So, of course, I'm using the stuff from, from, uh, from the, 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 the gym. I'm using psychology, cold stuff. I'm using, uh, I did needed to, to also study some, some stuff about the, 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 the human body to make more sense, to understand how the muscle working for which type of movement, for which type of motion, feeling, expression. And I just take my shaker, mix up everything and giving in an easier way for everyone. After a while, you got your partner, which you have today, Mirti. She didn't do a lot of Kisomba before she met you or how did that partnership uh, start off? So basically, she she was dancing. She started in 2016. I needed a partner, so I recruited her uh, in 2017. But uh, I had a different vision than what she thought for her at the beginning. How did it start? You, I didn't, I didn't want it to dance with her at the beginning, to be honest. But but I did see the potential. And this, this was one of my great stuff, even from hip hop, that I was being able to seeing the positive, even though that the people were seeing the negative or that they were seeing, saying that, no, this person will never reach any dance level. And I'm going to say, look, watch me. I'm going to bring this person in, into a certain level and you're going to agree with it. When I choose her, people were saying, yeah. You did the wrong choice. You were good with Lydia because you're an amazing show, blah, blah, blah. And today, Mirti is one of the best followers. So <laughs> I just prove again that I have the tools to, to give anyone what they need to get the, their best level. But one thing also, it depends not only to me, but also to the person. If the person is not working in a proper way and not motivated enough to make it happen, it will, won't work. And it's funny because your both names or nicknames are like very sweet. I mean, <laughs> I, it took me a while to know that your real name was not Shamalo. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and so what, what does Shamalo mean for the people who don't know? So Shamalo means marshmallow. <laughs> it means marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Mirti? Mirti means blueberry. So you ha you are a combo of marshmallows and blueberries, basically. Exactly. So that's why we said like we are we are the Kizomba fusion bonbon frite, which is me, which means uh, candy fruits. Okay, so bonbon frite, I I love it, love it. What kind of people uh, is joining your family? Because you always talk about Castle of Dance as a family rather than yeah. just a dance school. What kind of people uh, do you have in your family? I have every type of people. That's the that's the nicest thing because, you know, let's say if we're gonna say that if you have um, this type of dance, you're gonna find this type of people. Or they look like that, or they, they 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 have this posture or whatever. For me, this castle just bring any type of dance into one place, any type of people into one place, any type of culture into one one place, any type of of origins in one place and ages because you can get someone with a with an older age and someone with a younger age dancing together and having fun so it's like we really break the boundaries that people in the society put and we say like we are human have fun with the one next to you and that's bring all the smile everyone just go out of the lesson like super happy so that that's that's one of the goal and we are 
succeeding for now until now. What has been one of your biggest learning moments about people as humans in general, teaching them? I learn from them every day, every day, which is which helped me to just keep on growing myself because I inspire them, they inspire me. So they even don't know it and they're not even aware that when I give them information, they are giving me thousand times more than what I give. And I go home, I'm treating this information, I translate it back to dance, I give it them back, boof, it's a new one. And they're like, again, wow, it's amazing. And it's what, 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 what I do, I can say one thing that I did learn is to get to know uh, the student in a better way in order to give what they need in a better way. So I can get 10 students, I'm gonna send to them the information, give the information to them in 10 different ways because I know them, I know how they're gonna to react towards this. So I can twist it for them to be able to uh, digest the information. You being like having this, okay, he's the world champion and people come in and, and you know, I've been on your classes. There are some people that are nervous and like a bit intimidated by you as a teacher in the beginning before they get to know you. What do you think is the biggest misconception that people have of you as a dancer or as a person in general? People are judgmental. So when they're going to see you, they're going to see, okay, how he look, is he, is, is he going to be a teacher? Sometimes I come really with my swag, hip hop, and they're going to be like, okay, he's going to teach us? Okay. If people are more used to maybe the office, going to the bank, going to the, they, they're going to maybe imagine someone, maybe, I don't know, with a suit or, or whatever, because it's a couple dance. We, we call this kind of the African tango. And they look at me like, okay, Show me what you can do. And I'm like, I'm just going to be me. So I, I have no need to prove to you that I'm going to give you the right information. By being myself, you're going to be touched. And at the end, you're going to be like, it's an amazing lesson. And it's what happened on and on. People were like, OK, I didn't know if I should step into the class. But now, you made my mind. You made my day. I'm going to come in and never leave out. And when you hear those things, it's just amazing. You know, sometimes uh, I catch you uh, before class watching anime. Uh, it's, it seems to be like one of your, your secret weapon. Do you also, yeah. do you have another like funny ways that you get inspired? Because I thought you looked at anime, you know, of course, to be relaxed and stuff. Yeah. But you also told me like, it's one of my secret weapons. Yeah. Because basically, uh, you know, when you follow a character or a series or whatever, this character is going to go through a lot of situation and he needs to go out of his problem. And you're going to see all this process, his dedication, his motivation, how he's going to go through it. Sometimes even when you look at a movie, you're like, you should do this or you should do that. And when they do this, you're like, ah, you see, when you listen to me, so it's, it's this, this kind of feeling, but all those anime, the, the, the uh, Japanese anime, um, has released some interesting characters uh, who bring a dedication in a high level. And I even create, I, I will say 50% of the techniques out of it. And when I bring it, People look at me, the first time that I said, do it like that, do it like that, they're like, they, they doubt what I'm, I'm, I'm saying. But when they are playing, you see their face like. <laughs> and it, it's, it's so funny. And I, I, sometimes I'm like, if you knew where I, I've, I've found this technique, but also, of course, it's not only 100% of the day. It needs to be connected with, as we said previously, coaching stuff, dancing stuff, uh, uh, human body uh, knowledge, but when you are breathing your your information, everything just comes like that. Do you have a favorite anime? Just for the fans out there. For the fans out there, uh, if you want to to get one, is really one who give me a lot uh, a lot of information. Is Coco no Basket. 
you're going to understand when you talk about being into the zone. It's uh, a way to be concentrated and focused. All right. All right. I, uh, I haven't seen that series. I, I will check it out. Maybe I can understand you a little bit better on the classes. After this. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't been starting shooting fireballs or anything crazy yet, but maybe it's going to come from the anime. No, no, no. no I, I have a new project, but I'm not going to tell a lot about it, but it's going to be connected to uh, fitness and Kizomba. All right. All right. So secrets. I love that. <laughs> You stopped counting a long time ago, how many hours you spend on developing your dancing, choreographing, teaching, traveling, like it's, it's really not just a job, yeah. it's a lifestyle. Why do you keep doing it? Why, what is driving you? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good question actually, because you know, uh, like everything, sometimes I, I, I think about stopping. But you know, you give to, so much to people and this thing bring you so much to yourself, to your life. So, you know, sometimes you don't even know what is driving you. So let's say you are going into one task or one stuff and you say, okay, I'm just going to do it. But you end up doing this for three, four hours. Like sometimes I said to myself, okay, I'm just going to shoot myself, make a video me freestyling i'm just gonna do five minutes but it's never five minutes five minutes just switch to three hours and when you look at it you're like oh and it's just because you're passionate of it you love it so it's part of you you've been into this lifestyle or way of living if you take this thing out it's really 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 hard and I've been into this situation when I broke my leg. And now I'm just grateful to be able to even walk. So as long as I'm able to move without pain, if, if I want to do what I love, I'm going to do for it. I'm going to go for it. And for the people who haven't seen, there's amazing videos of you teaching in a wheelchair, on crutches. Like there's a, there's a fantastic variety of you teaching with different... Yeah, no, but it was amazing because, you know, I didn't expect this. I went to the festival, I, I did three festivals uh, on my wheelchair, maybe more, I don't remember. But three was really big. I got the biggest class of the festival. So I come when you have over 200 people just going and they are like looking at this guy. Again, people are judgmental. What is what is what does he gonna do? He's on a wheelchair. And I said to people, come and see. They were like, mm, it's interesting. I'm gonna come. And after at the end, come people coming to you saying that, I'm sorry, but now I don't know what to to think anymore because you were in a wheelchair. You give me the best class of this festival, so I'm I'm wondering what the others are doing. And I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know being me being me yeah yeah no it, it's it's crazy I think that that was a really good experience for you even though of course you never want to break anything um but Dutch stairs you know what to do you, you sometimes you break your leg <laughs> yeah it was a bit. <laughs> yeah true 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 what is the one thing you haven't done with your dancing that you would love to achieve Put the, 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 the keys on bound, the map, uh, but not like it is right now. Really on the map, going into stage, like being on a premiere of a concert, doing a show on TV, uh, making this thing huge like hip hop. Because right now, let's say, you see salsa on TV, you see salsa on concert, uh, but not that much kizomba. The Kizomba can go on stage, but never on a big, big stage. And if we make this thing happening, like, I don't know if it can be even the world of dance, people are going to say, yeah, Kizomba, what it is. I heard about it. Oh, I know those type of music. And they are like, so surprised. And if we are being able to bring this crazy thing, this is what I want to do. To go big, global. Yeah. yeah. 
behind your brand, there's a life story that we've just been talking about. And we could go into so many details about it. Um, but I do think that um, going from, from that dancer in Paris, growing up, looking into the windows and wanting to be a part of it, what would you yeah. like to say to that Shamalo, to the young Shamalo, if you could talk yeah, to him today? To the young Shamalo. Um, uh, listen, young Shamalo. <laughs> Life is hard. Uh, a lot of people will not believe in you, but you're gonna need to persist on what you want to go for. But next to that, if you found out the right way to work on it, believe me, every day on your life you're gonna grow as a person, as a dancer, as a human being, and people you will not be you will not need anymore to prove to the to, to the people who you are or what you're doing is good they're going to tell it for you and they're going to spread it for you and just go and draw your best that's nice and it's probably a long you know a lot of young shamalo still in the same place in paris needing to to know that so yeah, and learn how to speak english also <laughs> <laughs> don't stick with the french too long yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and and for the people that you know have never been dancing kisomba that are maybe watching this interview right now and they're gonna check out your videos and be like i could never do that i could never do that i'm not even gonna try what do you want to say to those people don't listen to what people talk about Kizomba. Kizomba can also be a dance uh, without putting the sexuality into it. So, again, don't listen to people, just make your own experience. And from this, you're going to be able to make a point or not. But if you're judging before trying, at least you're just telling the story of the other. So, tell your own life story. Mm, I saw you, I see you. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, you know, from, from me to you, thank you so much. Um, it's been a couple of years now since we've known each other, but I feel like I get to know you more every day. And uh, I'm really, really blessed. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing your life story with us here. And uh, yeah, I see you soon. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for this uh, amazing thing. Keep going. A life story is really an amazing thing. So guys, keep on putting the thumbs up on this. Don't forget my online class, Castle of Dance, www.castleofdance.com. You're gonna be amazed by the technique like you've never seen before. And thank you for a life and story of Saddam. Yes, check out the link below. We're gonna link to everything uh, with Castle of Dance and just join now. There's no better time than to join now. If we have nothing else to do than to dance at home, right? So thank you so much. <laughs>